team, there's no point in us competing. Nobody's going to win if we're fighting each other and we're on the same team. Cowards do that. Men work together because that's what men do. You understand what I'm saying? It really boils down to also just general confidence within yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, a little back history on the situation is like we all kind of came up in the scene together. together. Uh, me and Nato were in a crew together, and he was in another crew, which was like a super crew on his own. And those two crews, they weren't like rivals, but they were just, you know, like it was a lot. It was like a, a dichotomy. You roll with this one, you roll with that one. You know what I'm saying? So over the years, what we decided to do was just to eliminate that option and just combine everything. You know what I'm saying? So we just made it one big giant ball of energy, and that's what we had right now. People understand they want us to fail. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes jump does not collaborate. Good things happen, you know what I'm saying? If you want to take it to another level, like, it's designed for us to fail. Pretty much, you beat it, you beat it all the way. Beating the system. <laughs> so, um, up and coming, go away to the Forest Tour, October, first week in October, coming to the city. Um, let's see, where we going first? Chicago. We're trying to get Minneapolis in the mix, but we're working that out right now. So, Chicago, Indianapolis, Columbus, Ohio. Um, Nashville, get down to A3C, come on back, do some stuff. So we'll be in uh, Kansas City in September, right? Kansas City, September 10th. For Indie Fest, two shots, Steady P for that look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're uh, keeping busy, man. Oh, yeah. 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 David Ruffin Theory. Yeah, me and Tef are doing a project together. Um, Tef Poe and Rockwell Nuggles doing right. a project called the David Ruffin Theory. Yeah. And uh, people ask us all the time, um, like, what's the whole point of, you know, calling it the David Ruffin Theory? See, the whole thing is, Y'all some mama's boys. <laughs> and y'all don't know nothing about us some women. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just fucking around, you know. We're saying it, you know. Nah, man. But, yeah, yeah, no, we just. Nato Khalid.com, when you get the chance. He's working on the EP with Black Spade. Nato Khalid.com, yeah, the EP with Black Spade is called Force Majeure, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which means act of God, so. Awesome. Which means he's gonna leave it at that. I'm excited. I can't wait. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was actually like the slowest song I ever did. Oh, like it okay. Was probably like 60 beats per minute or something like that. <laughs> uh, Tex, Tex Supreme, shout out to Tex Supreme. He did the track. It's pretty much. Um, and Black Spade was on the, on the hook singing that. Yeah, that was like one of the slowest joints, but it was. It was it was just all about vibing out, you know what I'm saying? So I do have an overall slower rhyme style, but that was like the slowest I ever <laughs> rhymed on the track. Good question. Yeah. I started out, well, I just. I, I, the only way to really describe it is to just talk about a little bit of the history of how it's going. I kind of started out in the, the battle rap circuit. Uh, and I came in, I didn't really have many songs. I couldn't rap on beat, I couldn't write hooks. Uh, I just had lyrics I'm on top of lyrics, you know what I'm saying? It was just a bunch of rhymes. And uh, I didn't have good stage presence or none of that. And basically I just went through what I call MC training school, you know what I'm saying? Like I started studying the greats, and then I started studying even the local greats, the people that I knew were better than me locally, you know, and uh, I just basically took myself through rap, the, what a rapper's version of college, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I like to think like right now where I'm at is, uh, I can do any, I think I can rap any kind of way, like you don't really know like what I might rap about today or rap about tomorrow, you know, like I try to keep certain elements in there with uh, talk about things that are going on in society. Sometimes if you listen to my music, it's like listening, watching CNN. Oh, Amy Winehouse died today. Damn, it's fucked up. Uh, shit, the budget collapsed. Damn, but then I'm going to talk about, damn, I saw this girl at the club last night with this thick ass. Nice. And then I might just want to do a whole song where I'm rapping metaphorically as if I'm Batman or some shit. Like, you just never know. And I think it comes from, like, more so, like, the golden era of hip-hop, like the true school, like the Wu-Tangs, mm. the Nas's the pox, the big puns, like the guys that were very lyrical, but still could do any form of rap, you know what I'm saying? That's pretty much it. Um, okay, well, um, my favorite, like, rappers are like, you know, like, Pac and Big, and you know what I'm saying? Him and uh, the Beatles and Michael Jackson and Prince, like, those are my favorite rappers. So, like, you know, I like I like shit with melody and harmony, so I like, I do a lot of crooning. My shit, I'm also the Frank Sinatra student, so like, you know what I'm saying, I do a lot of crooning, I do a lot of screaming and yelling, you understand what I'm saying? Um, my stuff is very volatile, it's very agitated, but it's very soothing. So it's like aloe vera after some sunburn. That's pretty much what my rhyme flow is like. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's all I got. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a family man, I got children and whatnot, so it's like, 
that kind of automatically, like, you're never not a dad, you know what I'm saying? If you're a father, I'm not saying like a baby's daddy situation, not trying to crap on anybody, but if you're a father, you're actively in your child's life, you can't turn it off, you know what I'm saying? You don't turn it off, so it's real. Every, every day is like a reflection of that in my music, so I speak more from the, from the, from the mind frame of like community and organizing, just kind of getting people together, because that's what I do in the daily life with my family. I, like, you almost always see them with me, like even at shows and things they're not even supposed to get in, <laughs> like sure. I have them with me, so it's just, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's more what, what my lane is. It, it started out a little bit a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? It was more mm -hmm. like just trying to hit people over here with knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Then it was like, okay, I'm gonna show you how I do that. You'll see it, and then I'll spit about it, and then you, you can realize, okay, he's not, he's not lying. I can that's show you me. better than I can tell you. Exactly. Some people would say it is, but in my personal opinion, technically no. Like there's there is a scene of people that are more worried about the radio and playing a proverbial game, if you will, you know what I mean? The industry game, I technically don't know what the hell that is. And then there are people who are trying to be, you know, with the true hip hop. And then there are people who are trying to be the hustlers rapper. Then there's, you know what I'm saying, the gangster rappers. Like everybody, it's like gang banging, man. Everybody picks their colors. And then we go back to living life, dog. There's no point in everybody being angry about anything. Because if you're good at what you do, it doesn't fucking matter at all. I think um, if, if you travel back, to like a few years uh, prior, like the early 99, 2000, 2001, 2003, like I think we kind of had, I kind of think I know what you're saying with that problem. Yeah. Like we kind of had that problem where there was like three or four different undergrounds and the city had unified to select which underground would be the actual representation of the city. Right. Like you know how you go to Philly and you know like there's a, a roots scene type, type underground, mm -hmm. jet soul type where, you know, but uh, and we, we kind of had that problem too, man, but I think in St. Louis, what's so interesting about St. Louis is like our most popular rappers, Nelly, uh, and the Lunatics and them, they come from like the actual backpack scene. Like the rest of the world don't know that, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, I mean, like they were in the ciphers and, and they did shows at, at venues like this before they made it, you know what I'm saying? So like th those, those lines were always in the process of blurring in St. Louis, you know? Um, and I think now, like, if you break it down on some political science type shit, like, now that Nelly is, is like, the, the top of the food chain for this city. Economically, the king. E economically. That, uh, since he's up there, you get what I call the Nelly factor. Like, everybody wants to try to outdo dude or do their own version of dude. But you can't do that, man. Why would you do that? Exactly. You know what I mean? He's already done it. He's been fucking awesome. Exactly. And he's made boatloads of money and people pop shit, you know. Exactly. And people always, like when we go out of town and stuff, people go, you're from St. Louis, exactly. right? No way. Like, exactly. yeah, he's arguably the motherfucking highest selling rapper ever exactly. next to Eminem. Exactly. So, yeah. But I'm I'm I think the interesting, <laughs> the dynamic that that presents, though, the inf like, a lot of people get mad at him, but I think what he did was a blessing in disguise because coming from St. Louis, you have backpack rappers on the radio. Like, I, like, I get radio spins, he gets spins. Like, you like you don't go to other cities and hear t a tough pole you don't turn on the radio and hear like the, the most lyrical guys on the radio. But our city has become accustomed to wanting to hear their, their hometown heroes on the airwaves. You know and for saying? the record, we are not backpack rappers. We rap about okay. boats and hoes and dope and all types of crazy <laughs> shit. <laughs> we rap about everything. See, see, my whole thing is, is when people say genre and things of that nature, the genre I want to be in, like when they talk about different genres, I want to be in the greatest of all time genre. Yeah. That's the genre. Cause see, big, Pac, M, J, Nas, Pun, they didn't have a specific genre. Yeah, that's what they're I just think. kind of the greatest, they're like the greatest of yeah, all time. Yeah. Outcast doesn't have a genre, yeah. they're just the greatest of all time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rakim, Daddy Kane, like they don't have a genre. That's exactly you know what I'm saying? saying? They do everything because they are the best. And that's pretty much what we've yeah. been trying to be. It's like no show that you can't call me for. Like there's, there's no show that we can't do. You need a promotion Not the sound. show, you know, I'm there. You need a show where I only rap to the women, I'm there. You good. You know, the other thing too is like St. Louis is it's size wise it's big but it's really really small so everybody know everybody that it's time out for that you'll be in the show you don't know everybody's related you don't know everybody from every crew you don't know like that beef stuff it, it's, it's gonna get old because it's, it's gonna end in some really really bad situation because there's wolves out here you know what I'm saying or cats is about to come together because everybody knows everybody so that they kind of dissolve all that through the, you know what I'm saying, natural attrition, you know what I'm saying? So. The next projects we have coming up, Tefpo has his project War Machine 2. That's going to be awesome. We have a project together called the David Ruffin Theory that's coming. It's going to be awesome. 
I have a project called Take Me to Your Leader. It's gonna be awesome. NATO told you about his new project. He's Force got coming majeure. Out. Force majeure. That sounds very classy, doesn't it? Um, we got a bunch of stuff coming out, man. We're just real busy. If you if you take the time, you know what I'm saying? At Rocky Knuckles, at Tef Poe, at NATO Khalif. Um, we're real busy, man. It's force, everybody wins. You know what I'm saying? Be like, good to yourself and each other. My thing is like if you catch windowless, man, like like this is how <laughs> movements start. You know what I'm saying? Like when, when you first heard of Kendrick Lamar, when you first heard of Dom Kennedy or whoever you listen to, when you first heard of them people, you spread it the word. You told somebody else about it. Like it's, it's that simple. Like we need if you catch wind of this and you like it, just tell somebody. You know what I'm saying? That, that word of mouth goes a long way. You know? Well, there will be more videos. <laughs> Let's do videos. He's got like a videos. thousand videos. <laughs> but anyway, Mom. man, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for yeah. fucking with us. I want you to take care and be safe for whatever you're doing and take shit from no one. Yeah, man. Ah! Yeah, all that. Yeah, 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 okay. Stay.